Two months ago, right here, we ran a piece comparing the two big amusement park chains, Six Flags and Cedar Fair. Even though Six Flags is in many ways the better operator, I told you to stick with Cedar Fair. The stock was cheaper, and it had a higher yield. That's a nice combination. Now, initially, that looked like a good call. From August 19th to September 30th, Cedar Fair rallied 11%, while Six Flags declined by 11%. But then last Wednesday, it became accidentally brilliant uh, when it was reported that Six Flags had made a cash and stock takeover bid for Cedar Fair. Stock caught fire on the news, but then Cedar Fair shot them down and pulled back. All right. So what the heck is really going on here with these two theme parks that we've talked about endlessly? And what are you supposed to do with the stocks? And we talk about them endlessly because we're always looking for high yield and high quality. And Cedar Fair's given us that. Okay, before we get to the takeover, you need to understand why Cedar Fair has spent the last couple of months outperforming Six Flags, all right? It's a very nice run, isn't it? Uh, right after Labor Day weekend, Cedar Fair released its year-to-date preliminary net, preliminary net revenue numbers. They're fantastic. It's up 8% year-over-year to a record $1.12 billion. The company had 1.1 million visits at its parks, up 6% year-over-year. Nice, huh? With in-park per capita spending up 3%. Cedar Fair had just reported a solid quarter in August, and then a little over a month ago, we learned that the company's maintaining its momentum. Plus, it, it didn't hurt that we got a huge rotation out of growth stocks into value names with high dividends. Don't forget, that was the same period that the utility stocks became the best performers in the Dow. And this is a REIT. Remember, we did the piece last week about the REITs being the second best. It's amazing. I'm not in the Dow, in the S&P. But this is, remember, a function of their bond proxy, so to speak. What about Six Flags? Why didn't the rotation help them? Funnily enough, we've gotten a series of positive analyst reports about these guys. The management team met with Berenberg, a boutique research firm. It told a terrific story. But the last time the cut reported it, at the beginning of August, the numbers were, let's just say, mixed. And I think that made it much harder to own during a period of intense turmoil for the averages. On top of that, Cedar Fair was cheaper with a bigger dividend. If you wanted to buy an amusement park stock for the income, Six Flags was not the way to go. Now, though, Cedar Fair stock has roared higher while Six Flags stock has broken down. At these levels, Six Flags has a higher yield and is the cheaper stock. On the other end, Cedar Fair is a big fat takeover target pain on its back. It's a $57 stock, and we already know that Six Flags is willing to pay at least 70 a share for this one. So last Wednesday, Reuters reported that Six Flags had come to Cedar Fair with an offer, although apparently it wasn't one of those Luca, Luca Brasi style, you can't refuse offers from Godfather. This story broke immediately after we learned that Blackstone, that's a gigantic private equity firm, had just taken a 65% stake in the privately held Great Wolf Resorts. That's another amusement park play. Suddenly it looked like we were dealing with a wave of consolidation and deal activity in the industry, and those deals had premium valuations. Get this, the deal values Great Wolf at $2.9 billion, and its current owner bought the whole darn thing for $1.35 billion just four and a half years ago. That's remarkable how much this business has gotten on fire. But almost from the moment the Six Flags Cedar Fair story broke, the analyst community divided against itself, uh, with some firms arguing the deal made sense and others arguing that it was incredibly foolish. Wells Fargo released a note pointing out that Six Flags would need to issue an enormous amount of equity to keep its balance sheet from getting too hard in debt and the price tag would likely be way too high. The very next day, KeyBank publishes a piece claiming the merger makes strategic sense. Six Flags and Cedar Fair can combine forces to become a regional amusement park behemoth with a ton of opportunities for cost-cutting. However, even this analyst who likes the general idea thinks the timing's bad. Instead of buying Cedar Fair here, he thinks Six Flags should have waited for a recession, well, yeah, where they'll be able to pick it up for a lot less. At the same time, Everybody was scrambling to figure out what Cedar Fair might be worth now that we need to consider it as a viable takeover target. I've seen a pretty wide range from 68 to as much as $90 a share. So Cedar Fair, well, let's just say it could really ramp. Come Friday, Wells Fargo tells us that they met with Cedar Fair's management and they're not looking to sell. A few hours later, Reuters reports that Cedar Fair actually rejected a $4 billion offer from Six Flags. That's about a $70 a share, uh, mostly in stock, but with a small cash component. The problem, let me read you this bit from the Reuters piece. Quote, Cedar Fair responded the Six Flags bid was too low, not least because it did not compensate Cedar Fair's shareholders for giving up on the company's tax advantage advantageous publicly traded partnership. Remember, I told you these are REITs. See, uh, Cedar Fair is a master limited partnership rather than an ordinary C Corp, which means they can they pay out the bulk of their earnings as dividends or distributions without getting hit with any corporate income tax. That's why it's so advantageous. It's a good point. If Six Flags really wants to buy Cedar Fair, they need to offer a much larger premium. And I don't think they can afford it. 
Key Bank says they might need to pay $85 a share, and that seems prohibitive to me, especially since Six Flags already has a debt-laden balance sheet. Either way, though, a lot has changed for the amusement park stock since I told you to buy Cedar Fair at 52 bucks in August. Although the stock has given up most of its gains since the deal news broke, Six Flags is still down substantially, though. The stock's been hammered. At these levels, both Cedar Fair and, Cedar and Six Flags sell for about 16 times next year's earnings estimates. Meanwhile, Six Flags now supports a notoriously B.I.G., 6.7% yield. Cedar Fair is paying you 64 When I recommended Cedar Fair in August, it was four turns cheaper than Six Flags, and its yield was 120 basis points larger, rather than 30 basis points smaller. So what do you do now? It was right to buy Cedar Fair and forget about Six Flags in August. Is that still the case? I think it has become a more complicated choice. Ah, some would say it was a no-brainer to go with Cedar Fair two months ago. With the takeover now presumably off the table, I could easily see Six Flags bouncing a few bucks here from 48 and change, maybe to the low 50s. But unless you're a trader, it's just not worth trying to chase that kind of move. As an investor, I say stick with Cedar Fair. Symbol F-U-N. Why? Because the takeover bid, for, uh, just all it does is confirm what I originally thought about these two names. It's a not-so-tacit admission from Six Flags. That Cedar Fair is an attractive asset. If they're willing to pay $70 a share, the stock must be a steal down here at 57 Plus, the fact that Six Flags is willing to do this as a mostly stock-based transaction, you can view that as an admission that their stock is overvalued. Otherwise, they would have arranged to borrow money and offer more cash. Bottom line here, even after the shakeup in the amusement park space, I think buying Six Flags here is throwing good money after bad. If you already own Cedar Fair, I'd stick with it. If you don't own it, hey, I recommend putting a small position on here, maybe waiting for a pullback. Nice, nice dividend. And who knows, maybe one day a takeover bid. Stick with Kramer. Coming up, knock, knock, ring, ring. Can this stock connect your business and help you ring in the returns? Kramer comes knocking with Ring Centro when Mad Money returns. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. <laughs> 